Hi, this is Jeff from the Ozark Mountains. That's in Missouri, in the USA. Well, we're over at the vintage kitchen table turned vintage computer table, and that can only mean one thing. That's right, it's time for another Ferengi Friday. Ferengi Friday is where we look at the recent acquisitions that have made their way into the shop. We always remember the 64th rule of acquisition, which clearly states, vintage computers are always a wise investment. So, grab yourself a rock to Gino, or a cup of coffee from Papua New Guinea, and let's get started. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. They do circuit boards of all sizes, small circuit boards, medium circuit boards. They can even assemble them for you. Are you a maker who likes sharing your ideas with other makers? If so, you can submit your articles to the monthly submission for PCBWay and earn coupons and notary titles. Check out the link in the description below. Got a very large box in the other day and I'm very excited about it. And I've waited all this time so I had time to film it. This comes all the way from Germany, courtesy of Jan Beta. It is an Aldi Commodore 64 with matching disk drive. He did a wonderful job packaging it. It was rather humorous watching the tracking on this. Uh, the U.S. Post Office kept sending it to a military base to the post office there, uh, Fort Leonard Wood, which is about 20 miles from here, instead of sending it to the town where I live. Uh, so I will get this out of all this paper and everything where it's so nicely packed, and we'll have a quick look at it. Okay, here we go. I think it will be easier to very carefully slip under the bubble wrap here and just cut that off of there. Got the matching 15 for you on floppy drive. Jan says this does not work, but it comes complete with the box. And that looks pretty much, you know, like the standard US version box did. However, the European uh, computer boxes themselves are much nicer looking. They're much more colorful. They came in different packs and things like that. Oh, this was shipped with, with Geos. So let me rearrange the camera here and we can slide this out of the package and have a look. Well, let's see here. How old our 64 microcomputer? I can read that part, I can't read the German. But I imagine this is high resolution graphics in color with a synthesizer that said chip. And also something about music synthesizer. Showing a screenshot here. On the back, it talks about all the stuff you can plug into it. The printer, uh, data set, modem, disk drive, different audio-visual things you can plug into it. Steck module, um, module for extension connection, so, you know, ex expansion cartridges. Um, oh, light Schreiber, light pin, uh, crayon drawing something, I'm guessing is what that's saying. So, all right, and made in Germany. Let's slide this guy out. And Jan says that this part does work, but we will do a full restoration video. I always manage to open up things backwards. Okay. Oh, that looks nice. Just 
you know, slightly dirty from being stored for years. You know, dusty type of thing. Funken Stort, that's the RF uh, writing saying there might be some RF interference, as I recall. Now, it's interesting that this says made in USA. I do recall uh, Jan did a special about the Aldi computers. And um, I will put a link to that in the description down below. And I do remember him saying that the computers themselves were made in the USA. Have a look at the power supply to see if they made that in Germany. Yeah, this is in really nice shape. And it still has the warranty sticker here. Octung. Ein something. That's that's about the extent of my German there. So got the manual. Biden Ung Shan Buck. I don't know. Book. Manuals in good shape. So I can read the basic program. And got the RF cord here. You notice this the foam from the box is on the cord. This is from the plasticizer. That's used in the plastic covering. The chemical that makes it stay flexible will eventually, over decades, eat into the styrofoam. And it can eat into like the plastic of the case too. It just makes it soft. For C64 use only, power supply, 220 volts, 50 hertz. Made in Singapore. Okay, well it's nice having the original power supply. I won't be using this on it. Oh, external fuse on this one, nice. Uh, the white bricks are built much better than the black bricks, at least the U.S. white bricks that I've seen. I imagine these are the same thing with a different transformer. But still, um, you can't get in there and replace the capacitors and stuff, so we'll just go with a nice modern power supply. And we actually use this. It's got the European power plug on there. Oh, this is so exciting. I can't wait to refurbish this. Okay, let's have a look at that disk drive now. Okay, we've got our floppy drive box. Uh, this looks just like the American version. Um, the one that we got over here in North America, it says made in Germany. Got the chicken lips logo on there. Oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, he did mention this came with Dolphin DOS, which was like a, a speed loading thing that was popular in Germany. I don't recall hearing about it in the United States until quite recently when uh, Sven Peterson talked about it and reproduced part of the boards. Okay, so this disk drive has been modified with Dolphin DOS. I think there's an add-on board in there. And... Um, Yep, 240 volts, 50 hertz. See, they snuck the cable out the side there. And I think there is a, there's a different kernel in the computer than two. Ah, a disc in there. That's a travel protector, nice. Okay, it still has the warranty sticker on the drive as well. Yeah, there's even the sleeve for the disc in there. The book. Ah, interestingly, this book is in English. Huh. And, oh, squeaky, the original cables. Nice. Okay, well, this will be an opportunity to get my hands actually on an Aldi C64. And uh, play with Dolphin DOS. Yeah, and this does say here, made in West Germany. Nice. 
So we'll have to solve the problem of uh, converting this to run on 110 volt. I don't think I'll be able to adjust the transformer that's in here. So we'll have to see how we can do that without ruining it. Or I will just get a small, you know, bench top sized uh, voltage doubler to use with this. With the C64, we can, you know, just use a regular old power supply. So, Jan, thank you very much for allowing me to uh, pick up this lovely Aldi C64 combo. Uh, they're not that plentiful in Germany, and it's quite a treat in the U.S. One funny thing, I couldn't figure out why this package kind of smelled like peanuts or peanut oil. Tyler realized it's the, the newsprint. It, it must be like a, a soybean oil type based ink. And it kind of smells like a, you know, sort of like peanuts. So I just found that kind of interesting. Okay. Big box here with another box inside of it. I was really excited to find this. I have been looking for another uh, Tandy PC2 Sharp PC1500 uh, serial interface module for months. Checking the Japanese auctions and eBay and everywhere. This was not the type I was looking for from Radio Shack. I have one of these, but this is in the original box and it looked almost new in box. See the little tab on the box is torn here, but it had everything that came with it still with it, which is kind of fun. Oh my goodness. How do we get this out of here? How about we do this first? What's in the side? Ooh. Oh, look at this. These are still taped here. I really think this is new in box. Oh, yeah, look. All this is still taped in here. No, that was open, but this stuff is taped here. These are the overlays. You slip that down on the keyboard, and it tells you what the special keys are when you are in the terminal mode. This is the plate to connect it to the computer and to connect your other devices to the interface. Yeah, this is new in box. Brand new, shiny, still taped down to the uh, cardboard. It's amazing. That says, to use these screws, refer to the instruction manual. Wow, this is new in box. That's pretty spiffy. Since I have one of these working, I might just leave this in the box. Oh yeah. The power supply still zipped up. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Bag of accessories here. Oh, this is the power filter. It keeps the power supply from causing problems with the computer. How do you get that? Baggy of goodies in it or something like that. It's kind of a weird way to do it. And here is the magic box. Now this is the same as the Sharp RS-232 interface, except that it only has RS-232. The Sharp also had a parallel port. And the only difference is this end plate doesn't have that knockout. And the, the daughter board in here that has an inverter and the plug and some wiring that goes into the main board isn't there. Also even has the little rubber cap. Pretty nifty. Brand new and shiny. Now the battery pack in this is going to be shot. I'll have to replace it. Don't want to leave it in there to corrode things. But I already did a video about building battery packs which uh, let's see this goes like that and that goes up how about that that's amazing I'm, I always wonder why somebody bought something like this and then it just sat around maybe it was a gift 
you know, maybe somebody got it cheap on sale. I can't quite read the sticker here, but it looks like it says 99. I don't know. Brand new in the box. PC2 serial interface. Nifty, nifty, nifty. From 50 to 2400 baud. Wow. Blazing speeds. And this is actually much faster transferring programs to the computer over this than by the cassette. Awesome. Well, we got another package that showed up in the mailbox today. And this is from eBay. As you can see, this should be a Tandy PC5 pocket computer, which is the only one I don't have. They seem to be rather hard to find. I was talking to some of the folks on um, Discord Tandy server. And one fellow in the UK, it took him about 18 months to find one. And about a week after asking about it on there, one popped up. And the funny thing is, it saved up, or it saved up. It showed up on his safe search from the UK, but not mine. And it was located in the US. Go figure. So, but he gave me the heads up. I was able to make an offer and get it. And this was packed pretty good, actually. No box. No guarantee it works. Not in bad physical conditions. Usually the hinges on these are cracking. And yeah, this one is. But it's the Tandy PC5, which is the same thing as the PC6 with less memory. So that's great. It's harder to find and you get less for your money. Um, yeah, it actually looks really good though. See a couple little dings on the ribbon cable there, which is kind of concerning. Looks like it may have been poked from one of the sides. So let me get a screwdriver here and a couple 2032 batteries and we'll see if we can't get this to work. Okay, I got a couple screwdrivers here. And oh, hey, this one's got a broke latch on it too. And it's also not super uncommon. Fortunately, the case is the same as the PC6. So the bad thing is there's really no way of fixing that latch piece that I can think of and doing it easily. Come on, let go. Okay, there we go. Got our batteries here. This is the memory battery, which is a 2016. I think it'll run without that. And I believe that under this flap, you can put a memory expansion. Oh, that's glued down. Well, look at that. It's not all there for this one. That's the regular Casio memory expansion, but they covered it up. They didn't want you to use it. Huh. How about that? Okay. Oops. Wrong screwdriver there. And luckily, these guys don't usually leak. See, this one was just starting to. But I don't see any signs of it in here. Maybe slightly on this side. Oh, there's a little brown right there. So just because they don't normally leak doesn't mean they can't leak. And I'm going to pull this 2016 out because it's going to be dead. 
and that might actually prevent it from starting up or could I'm speculating no leakage showing there either the moment of truth yay it works um, contrast Let me set this down sure it won't be as wobbly now we can see it on camera how about that just needed some batteries Oh, the beeper is on. Okay, I thought the display was changing as I rotated it, but I think it's just the display angle. Now, if we go, if I can remember how to do this. Mode 1. Yeah, see it's showing some garbage programs in there and um, amount of memory because the batteries were dead okay got out one of my pc sixes and the manual for it and it says go into mode one which is program mode and type in new should clear just this space error eight no oh yeah it might be thinking it's password locked and did that reset it no there's a reset button right here which beeped after pressing it now if we go to mode one aha Okay, that was it. We just need to press the reset. And so there's about three and a half K. I don't think I have batteries left in this guy. Oh, I do. Bad Jeffrey, bad Jeffrey mode. Let's see, this has 8K in it. There's something in the first two program slots, but so that's kind of interesting on this one um, they really didn't want you adding to it i also notice it's missing the cover but we can print those now can't we okay so i'm going to take the batteries out of this and have a peek at this latch on the pc6 i'm not sure how we would go about replacing this we'd probably have to take this top cover off and trim this whole thing off here and glue another piece on or maybe trim this broken piece flush and create a piece that glues on top of here and goes down i kind of like that idea better because it gives you more surface area yeah and that might make a 3d printable part it would be obvious that it was you know repaired but it would latch so that might be a thing to do and I can print a cover for that anyhow so got the batteries out of this thing just in the nick of time okay I'm curious now let's uh take the back off this PC6 and see what that m memory expansion looks like yeah oh this is a completely different style expansion check this out so here's the difference between the two yeah now i'm remembering on the pc6 they didn't use the standard um funky 4-bit RAM modules they did with like the uh, FP100 and things like that. That's what this that's what this expansion is for. Yeah, and these HD6014s, these are the funky RAM modules. You notice how these particular packages are missing 
one chunk of the pins, they just whacked them off there because they're not used. And only one pin on this side is used. So with the PC5, they used the old fashioned style RAM module. And there's really no place to put one on here because they have these two chips populated. But I bet it would still recognize it if you put one on there. Interesting. Okay. And on the PC6, when they did these, um, instead of using these little modules like this, these, these are 1K a piece, instead of using those, they had a special chip that converted the 4-bit bus to a regular 8-bit uh, RAM type bus. So you could use regular 8-bit RAMs. And this is the type of RAM module that you would they used on the later Casios. Um, I actually built one of these for a different Casio, which I'll have a, a video on shortly. And yeah, it looks very similar. So I don't know if, if the RP33 will work here. Yeah, you can see this is a standard, if you can see that standard 8-bit RAM right here. And this might be the converter chip that they used. Okay, very close, but not quite the same. This difference between the PC5 and PC6, I didn't know that. Glad I got the PC5 anyhow. That was the missing piece for my collection. And even though it's a little broken, uh, that type of thing, it still works. And that's what matters. Let's see what we got here. Both of these came from Facebook Marketplace. I had several of these when I was a kid. These are output by Radio Shack. And it was all sorts of different things, you know, just like a, a nerdy comic book, you know, featuring a lot of the childhood propaganda topics at that time. It was kind of fun. Somebody had a few, you know, there's a couple different people that had these relatively inexpensive, so I picked a few up just to kind of reminisce. And somebody went all out with this one, didn't they? Very well packaged. Yeah, look at that. Even in a plastic. Wow, that is like new. I think I'm going to leave that in a plastic bag. Oh yeah, see here? Recycling. Yep, I think I'll keep that right in that plastic for now because that is like brand new. Very nifty. Yep, when I was young, we could afford the comic books about computers and such, but yeah, not the computers themselves, although this is shown at Tandy 1000, sir. This is later than the ones I had. I'm not sure about this one. I don't see any computers featured in this one, but they usually had, oh, okay. That has a cocoa. Oops, there you can't see that. That has a cocoa in there. Yep, okay. And what's the copyright? Um, August 1988, so I would have been out of high school by the time this one came out. Anyhow, just something fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. It was a lot of fun op opening up all that stuff and having a look at it and kind of comparing things like the PC5 and PC6. Uh, thanks again to Jan Beta for making me a good deal on that Aldi C64 and the matching disk drive. That's quite a treat to have here in the USA. If you have any questions or comments, well, just leave them in that comment section down there below. I would love to hear from you. Thanks to everyone who helps support the Hey Bert channel through Patreon and other means. If you would like some more information about that, just look in the description down below. Well, 
Until next time, bye.